is Biomutant worth playing this year? I just finished the entire game and by the end of this video you will have an informed opinion on whether you should or should not play this game. Let's begin. Biomutant is an open world RPG with a non-linear quest structure. It has all of the usual systems you would come to expect from an RPG like the main and side quests littered throughout an open world, it has weapon and armor crafting, you can level up and assign your stats the way you want to play your character, you can become a bio wizard using toxic attacks to crowd control your enemies or just blow them away with your guns. You can dual wield, two hand, a variety of guns and melee weapons and mix and match everything in between. In my playthrough I specialized in a dual wielding semi-automatic weapon character and I dabbled in a few movement mutations allowing me to keep distance between myself and some of the tougher enemies that always try and close the gap on you. While it was fun, the game does become quite tedious relatively fast once you catch on to the fact that most of if not all quests are simply glorified fetch quests with MMO levels of design, meaning collect four of this or do this thing five times. You start to feel like you're on a treadmill. When I was at the five hour mark with Biomutant, most of the time the only thing running through my head was, man what am I doing with my life? What's the future gonna bring for me? Why am I wasting so much time playing video games like this? Maybe I should pick up a book and read something instead of grinding at this game. And listen, when those types of intrusive thoughts start filling your head when you're playing a video game, that's never a good sign. When my thoughts are focused on the game and sometimes when you go to bed and all you can think about is the next build you want to try or the boss that you couldn't beat and how you're going to beat him tomorrow when you boot up the game again. Those are usually good signs that a game is good. But unfortunately, the open world design with all of its bells and whistles was just not enough to sustain my desire to play the game further. In fact, I only finished the game because I created an hour long video on my main channel about how bad this game is and what went wrong. But my main gripe with the game is the quest design ethos. Instead of adding a myriad of collectathons, I would have just focused on less quests but have a more focused design on creating an engaging narrative. Now I believe the issue with the quests is actually that the world is too large. If the devs actually lessened the amount of quests you have to focus on tighter writing and design, the world would feel way more emptier than it should, which would mean a whole redesign of the world as a whole. Another interesting thing to note is that enemies do not respawn. Yes, in this game, they do not respawn. In a game with an open world and dungeons, the enemies do not respawn. Meaning that once you've cleared an area, there is no reason to return because you will find it left barren. And most of the time, open world RPGs encourage players to move around the world multiple times and engage with enemies that would typically spawn, usually with a higher level variance to keep things interesting as you progress in the game. But here in Biomutant, the world lays empty for you. Eventually, if you play the game long enough, you would just turn this game and this world into a glorified tech demo. This kills creativity in character builds and running certain areas over because you've enjoyed the map design or perhaps you want to try a new build on a certain type of enemy, well, you can't. Another issue I have with the game is that during development of Biomutant, they removed the ability to respec your character, meaning you better choose wisely because there's no going back on your design unless you have a backup save game. And while there is a new game plus, if you've actually finished all of the content and you want to start in a fresh new world, that doesn't actually fix the problem. What if I want to raid the same enemy base over and over in one playthrough, testing out cool weapons and skills to figure out what build works for me? Well, you can't. The story is nothing special either. 
you're in a world that's on the brink of environmental disaster. The company behind all of the pollution, fittingly named Toxinol, polluted the world's waters, air and land. Most of the rich members of society have fled to other planets through spaceships built by the same company. What's left is a world that's about to be destroyed by four world eaters who are attacking the roots of the world tree, which is the last thing keeping the world from plunging into permanent disrepair. And it's your job to either destroy the four world eaters or capture them to do your bidding and end the world. So you do have an illusion of choice, but at the end of the game you still have to fight and defeat them, making your choice truly pointless. I praise the devs for at least adding mounts to the game. They have the foresight to realize that their world was way too large and having mounts to get around would be critical. My only gripe there is that there isn't that many of them and they are only used to travel the world and I wish they could have been more incorporated into the story or even the world. Yes, you can shoot your guns from them but you lose all of your movement tech that you have in your current build and melee players are not going to be swiping attacks while on mount back. It's just truly an awful experience. When searching dungeon areas for gear, of course we all covered those sweet sweet orange tier legendary items. Well, those only start spawning late in the game and what makes it worse is that when you do find those, they are either not as good as the gear you already have or they are either just out of reach because you do not meet the level requirements. Some gear I found I needed to be level 30 to equip. And for context, I finished the game at level 19 and there is no way in hell I was going to play further just to equip a piece of armor. Speaking about gear, the game's gear balance is way off. Guns are the meta in this game. Forget skills, forget melee weapons. If you want to have an even remotely playable experience, you need guns. It doesn't matter what guns, you just need to stay back and kite while blasting everything that moves. And be careful not to stray too far from the enemy camps or you risk dropping aggro and you watch the enemy as he becomes invulnerable returning back to base camp while regenerating his entire health pool. So circle strafing is a must in this game. Melee weapon attack animations keep you locked into place. And with the jank parry system that punishes you more than it rewards, it just doesn't make sense. Enemies will try and grab you, bomb you, make you step into toxic goo, burn you, which can all be mitigated by simply circle strafing and spamming the left mouse button to shoot from a distance. The enemy AI is pretty stupid as well. If you circle strafe and shoot, I guarantee that nothing will ever beat you in this game. No matter how bad you build your character, there is something about circle strafing that just turns the AI's brain into mush. And yes, it's fun to completely stomp everything. How long would you like to keep doing that for though? It's not like you're working to any type of in-game or multiplayer aspects to keep you engaged. It's just endless circle strafing, beating enemies, finding mats to craft and upgrade weapons and armor, then repeat. And it doesn't even do that right. Man, I've been playing Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for the 3DS lately and I've been having such a blast with that old game. It's crazy how good game design and a well thought out structure for your game can leave players enjoying it for decades after its creation. Unfortunately, while I do respect the devs for creating work and putting it out there for the world, I cannot recommend this game to my viewers because my sole purpose for this channel is to not only save you money, but more importantly, I want to save you time. You cannot get back the time from playing a bad video game. Even if money is not a problem for you, we all only have so much time and I'm willing to waste mine playing a game that might not be worth playing if it means I can at least bring you an honest opinion on the game. In my hour long review at the end I did rate this game a B tier and I stated that this game is worth at least one playthrough or one attempt at a playthrough if you can even stomach to finish it. But in this review where the scale is only is it worth it or not I'm going to say no. 
this game is not worth playing this year or in fact any year i would highly recommend playing something else with your time there are so many great games that deserve much more recognition and i'm going to do my best to, to bring those games to light so you can enjoy them if you found this useful please click the like button it's the youtuber equivalent of patting me on the head and calling me a good boy thanks